So, you want to get into digital art, but you take one look at all the tools you gotta get and whoa, there are so many to choose from, and some of them are really expensive. Which one should you pick? Hi, I'm Pcat, and I've been drawing for a while now, and I've tried a whole bunch of different tablets and tools. I'll use my experience to help you figure out which one of these tools might be the best fit for you. Let's get into it. But first, let me get this out of the way. This goes without saying, but good old paper and pencil is good enough if you're just getting started with art. If you're figuring out drawing fundamentals and foundational skills, you can learn those with traditional tools just fine. Even if you want to eventually move to digital art, you'll find that there are plenty of skills that transfer over. So it's perfectly fine to start your art journey with something that costs a lot less than a drawing tablet. But if you're feeling ready to take the next step, let's see what kind of options we have. So drawing tablets. In order to be able to draw digitally, you'll need some kind of tool. Technically, it is possible to use a mouse. And I've also heard whispers of people using the forbidden technique of drawing on their phones. But for the rest of us mortals, we'll probably be needing something like a drawing tablet. A device that can simulate the experience of drawing on paper, but digitally. We can put most drawing tablets into two categories, non-display tablets and display tablets. Non-display tablets work sort of like a mouse, except you control the cursor with a stylus. But of course, you'll have to connect them to a separate computer for them to work. It's not exactly like drawing on paper, because there's an additional degree of separation. It takes time to build the muscle memory and coordination for it. A display tablet, on the other hand, has a built-in screen, so you can see what you're working on, which mimics traditional art more closely. So does that mean that display tablets are strictly better than non-display tablets? A lot of people seem to think so, but there are actually plenty of professional artists that prefer non-display tablets. You can definitely get pro-level results on them. For one thing, they are much cheaper. And your posture also tends to be better because instead of being hunched over a screen all the time, you're looking up at your monitor. For non-display tablets, Wacom is always a safe bet with their Wacom 1 or Intuos line. But if you're looking for more budget options, the XP Pen Deco series are well-reviewed and used by many artists. Personally though, I prefer a display tablet. But even just within display tablets, there are so many to choose from. What brand should you get? How big should the tablet be? Well, the first thing to consider is whether you want to use a device with a computer or not. Like non-display tablets, some display tablets only work if you connect them to a PC or Mac. On the other hand, standalone tablets can work on their own. An example of that would be an iPad or an Android tablet. Personally, I used an iPad for the longest time myself. They work great if you're looking for something more portable so you can do some sketching on the go. Sounds perfect, right? You don't even need a computer. But it's not like there's no drawbacks. For one, it can be pretty annoying to transfer images and files to a computer if you need to do that. Secondly, there is a size limit when it comes to these standalone devices because they need to be portable. And you might be surprised by this, but the size of the screen is actually pretty important. I used to use an iPad, but ultimately ended up switching to a regular display tablet because of it. But why does size make such a big difference? <laughs> it better be important because larger tablets can get expensive really quick. Let's start by thinking back to the people who draw with their phones. Phones are really just tiny little tablets, but the screen is so tiny, you don't have much space to work with. So you're forced to use tiny, precise finger movements. Of course, it's better with an actual tablet, even if it's a small one, but you'll still end up using repetitive wrist motions, which isn't the worst thing in itself, but if you're not careful, you could end up injuring yourself. If you have a larger tablet, you can use your arm and shoulder to draw instead, but there's also another benefit you might not know about. With the larger screen, you'll need to zoom in and out less often. I was surprised to find this out, but not having to manipulate the canvas as often actually ends up saving a lot of time. But which tablets do I personally like? Please keep in mind that for my recommendations, I can only talk about what I've personally used. For a portable device, I really love the Apple iPad. The iPad has access to one of the best drawing apps out there. I'll talk about those a little later. It's also very portable and the pen feel is amazing. It's super responsive. This is the closest you can get to a pen and paper feel. However, one thing that a lot of people don't like is how slippery the surface of the iPad feels. But you can fix this problem with the help of the sponsor of this video, Paperlike, the original screen protector that started it all. Paperlike uses a special micro bead technology called NanoDots that gives you the feel of paper without sacrificing screen clarity. That means almost no glare, and you can barely see fingerprints and smudges. The protector itself is super thin, almost as thin as a human hair, so it doesn't affect the precision of the Apple Pencil. 
With this extra resistance, you can draw with more accuracy and comfort, just like drawing on paper. I've actually been using a paper-like screen protector for years, and honestly, it's been holding up great. But here's another thing I love about Paperlike. The application process is really straightforward and easy to follow. Personally, I'm really bad at applying screen protectors. In fact, the only one I've ever applied successfully is my first Paperlike from years ago. But everything you need is in the box and the instructions are super clear. And even if you do somehow mess it up twice, because by default Paperlike comes with two screen protectors in the box, there's a 100 day satisfaction guarantee. They'll offer a free replacement or refund within 100 days. If you want to try it out, check out the link in my description, and thanks again to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. And now, back to talking about drawing on iPads. I know it's easy to get wowed by all the flashy new features they keep releasing with each new generation of iPad, but if it's just for drawing, you don't really need anything so fancy. If you can get an older model, either secondhand or refurbished, it'll work perfectly fine, as long as it supports an Apple Pencil. There are a bunch of versions out there, so make sure your iPad supports the right one. I'm still using an old 2018 iPad Pro. I mostly got it because of the second generation Apple Pencil that was announced at the time. The first generation Pencil is okay, I just think the way they charge it is a little goofy, especially when you compare it to the Gen 2 Pencils. But what if I'm at home? I've actually tried quite a few display tablets. The Huion Canvas display tablets are perfectly serviceable, or any of the Gen 2 display tablets from XP Pen. But I've used two specific tablets more than any other. The first is actually an old Wacom 27 QHD that I got from my old workplace. This thing is 27 inches. It's huge. Especially when you pair it with an ergo stand. I genuinely can't even lift this thing. But the big screen makes it perfect for drawing, and even though it's pretty old, it's still a Wacom tablet, so it still has that industry standard pen accuracy and responsiveness. Also, since it's so big, I can position it so that it's nearly vertical. This makes it much easier on my neck since I don't have to hunch over. The problem is, Wacom's display tabs, especially big ones, tend to be really expensive. So what if you want something cheaper? Recently, I've actually replaced my Wacom tablet with another brand's. Right now, I'm using an XP Pen Artist Pro 24 Gen 2 165Hz, which is slightly smaller. 27 inches actually felt a little bit too big for me, so 24 inches is perfect. It's a much newer tablet, so the colors are way more vibrant. And what's more, it comes with a blistering 165Hz refresh rate, so it's surprisingly good for gaming as well. I'd say that the high refresh rate makes it feel even snappier than the Wacom, though the pen accuracy is just a little bit less good. But it's good enough for my purposes, so it's currently my primary drawing tablets. This still isn't a cheap tablet, but it's definitely cheaper than a comparable tablet from Wacom. But you'll need more than just hardware if you want to do digital art. So now we're going to take a look at some software. Obviously, you could draw with something like MS Paint, but it doesn't mean that you should. Why are my glasses so dirty? <laughs> you might already know about Photoshop. For a long time, this was the go-to industry standard software. However, Photoshop is a bit expensive. And it's subscription only to boot. So let's take a look at some other options, starting with some for Windows and Mac. Personally, I really like Clip Studio Paint. I honestly think it's one of the best drawing apps out there. You can get it as a one-off purchase and it often goes on sale. It even has a free trial if you just want to try it out. It's also available on iOS and Android. But if you want something free to start you off, something else you could consider is Krita. It's open source and- wait, is Krita open source? Yes. <laughs> it's open source and it has tons of features, almost to a fault. For example, the Colorize Mask tool that allows you to quickly color in line art. But its interface is not exactly the most clean or user-friendly. In fact, for someone starting out, it's actually kind of cluttered and confusing. If you want something a little cleaner and lighter, you can also try Metabang or Fire Alpaca. They're not quite as full-featured as Krita, but the user interface is sensible and intuitive to learn. But what if you'd prefer to use a mobile device instead? I mentioned this earlier, but I said that the iPad had one of the best drawing apps available, and that app is Procreate. It is a paid app, but it's very reasonably priced. It's super intuitive and easy to pick up, but it doesn't skimp on features either. Plenty of professional artists actually use Procreate as their primary drawing application. I'd say if you're looking for a combo that feels the closest to drawing on paper, that would probably be Procreate with an iPad. But it's also not the only option available on the iPad. And what if you have an Android tablet? In that case, a free app you might want to try is Ibis Paint. 
The free version is ad supported, but it also comes with everything you might need in a drawing app. Interestingly, it's also available on Windows. Yeah, out of the box, everything just seems to work. That's great. But unless you're a super fan, I wouldn't recommend using that version. It very much looks and feels like it was directly ported from the mobile version, which it probably was. Anyway, I hope that this video gave you everything you needed to start on your digital art journey. Again, I want to remind everyone that I can only give recommendations based on my own actual experiences. I hope that it was helpful and if you want to learn how to start drawing, maybe check out this video. Bye bye